Now, again, I was particularly annoyed <laughs> when Ted's office accepted so quickly to come up here. So, uh, first of all, please give the former Premier a hand. Yeah. You don't have to make a speech or anything if you don't want to. What? <laughs> Politicians, come <laughs> on. I think got to speak, I oh. get to speak. <laughs> but Ted will speak. <laughs> and he's got the scissors. I've got the scissors. Perry, thank you very much and uh, to you and all your team and all of you and to Alan and his family and everybody else who's put this together. Let me say um, I'm a bit of a NASA perv, not a NASA nerd. <laughs> I follow the NASA tweet sites. I'm just constantly amazed and nothing fills me up more in my life than being uplifted by the things that people do. Yeah. And I gotta say, I didn't know this was here. Yeah. I was Premier of Victoria and I didn't know this was here. So there's a message there. I don't think too many other politicians know this is here. I don't think they know what you're doing and maybe, maybe they don't need to know. <laughs> However, politicians are suspicious of secret societies. <laughs> now, I arrived here and I thought that I was in a Jim Jones convention. You're all sitting in order, waiting to be served the Kool-Aid by Perry waiting to say some dramatic farewell and be lifted up into the atmosphere. <laughs> what I've discovered about this secret society, you've got artillery arranged around here. <laughs> and there, that is artillery that can bring down just about any drone. <laughs> I've got to say, I own NASA. When I was just little, some of you are probably as old as me, um, I had a lucky break here of NASA. I was in the school debating team. And we had a debating final. And I turned up at school and somebody said to me, are you ready? And I thought, oh, shh. I had completely forgotten. Mm -hmm. I was totally and utterly unprepared for the final of debating which is the story of my political career. <laughs> <laughs> However, at about 9.30 that morning, the school bells rang. We were all dragged into uh, the assembly hall and we were forced against our will to sit down and watch Armstrong land on the moon. Oh. Right. NASA saved me from the evils of debating. <laughs> <laughs> I've owed NASA ever since. I feel incredibly uplifted by just seeing what you're doing here. I would encourage you. I would encourage you to keep going. I would also encourage you to engage your local member of parliament and simply ask them the question, what have you done? for the Astronomical Society of Victoria. I was fortunate to have a visit to uh, the observatory 18 months ago, something like that. Mm. Yes. And I made a commitment to Perry then, if I can help in any way at all, mm. I'm a dead print. But if I can help in any way, I'm happy to help. Yeah. And we're here on, on that account. And I've been pushing quietly in, in various directions to get you some more attention. You may not want the attention. You may like this secret thing that's going on here. I saw that seance circle established down there. I'm suspicious of that, and I, I expect to be elevated later on. You will be. No. But this is, this is an amazing place. Astronomy is, this, is, is the one thing that just overwhelms us all when we think about it. 
I've had some fairly significant back surgery in the last year. And I've been through the other end of imaging, which uh, Alan was referring to before. And it is magic. And I'm also involved in a project in the city called Magic. And it goes into that project is based on the fine line between science and magic. And Alan, I think, knows the same project. We're both quietly involved in another secret society. <laughs> <laughs> it's all science based. This is just a splendid thing and a splendid place. Congratulations to all. I'm more than happy to cut the ribbon. I've had the honour of cutting ribbons to open things in the past. I can't imagine the, the, the corollary of a ribbon and a radio telescope. There seem to be technologies at opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> Can a ribbon prevent you from using this uh, device? <laughs> if I say that, it may well fall on me. <laughs> I was asked to open an engineer's office once, and they uh, made me chew through a candy chain. Would you <laughs> I had to open an art gallery and smash a bottle of champagne on the floor and splatter glass all over the, uh, uh, of the patrons. Ribbons are fantastic. <laughs> I will say I am fundamentally disappointed though in this, in this society. You've really got to catch up. To come here and see you talking about 24 inch and 40 inch telescopes and stuff like that. This is a resistance movement. <laughs> My architectural partner in another life used to call me the metric man. 100 kilos. 200 centimetres and an IQ of 10. <laughs> and you guys are still imperial, not metric. Get with it. Bring your members of parliament and put the heat on them. Embarrass them to the fact that they don't know this is here and they haven't been. And nail the Premier. Get the Premier here. Get the opposition leader here. And you will get the influence you seek. You don't want too much influence. The more independence you maintain, the better. But if you can get some money to upgrade the observatory uh, in the Botanical Gardens, God bless you. Ribbon is cut. Congratulations. And now we'll just turn around and we'll just... No, not, I'm not going to stab you in the back. Closed in. Now that, it op now that it's open, it's closed. Now it's moving. Now, guys, we're going to do the sky tour now. We will head off the same way that we did before. But now, I will invite you to have a look at the Those of you that are invited here, we have mm -hmm. chairs for you.